Leave me alone. I don't want to see you. If you disturb me again, I'll beat you Brian, up. can you stop picking on your brother? <laughs> Professor Mwita, this topic is irrelevant. Resource sharing has always been about who you know, what tribe you're from. Is there really any point in talking about it as a technical well, matter? Well, this is true. Nothing but... has changed, sir. Nothing at all. It's always been the same. This tribe... I want the last piece. I'm much bigger than but you, I so I need more carbohydrate. Mom! Brian, can you stop hitting your brother with the food? Honey, please talk to your kids. There's nothing you can do, even if you tell mom. She wouldn't do Mom! Dad is carrying the ugali. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Let us talk about resource allocation. The last time we spoke, you said that revenue allocation has never been done in any logical manner and cited Kenya's history of bad revenue practice. Ladies and gentlemen, Something has indeed changed since then. There are three main principles that now ought to be used in the practice of revenue allocation. The first is need, which stipulates that people should not all be treated equally if their needs are not equal. For example, we might need to provide more for this strapping young lad than for this little Miss Canini. <laughs> what did you say? With the counties, we currently give more to areas with more people. One would argue, however, that another way of looking at needs is through the lens of marginalization. Those counties that have not been getting enough resources in the past need them more than the wealthier ones. Think about that as you consider needs. The second principle is capacity. We generally expect those who have greater capacity and ability to either contribute more or to receive less. New data shows that in 2013-2014, the top 10 counties collected over three quarters of all the resources collected within 47 counties. The remaining 37 counties collected just one quarter. By that logic, perhaps, we ought to give less resources to a strapping young lad here and Mr. Rugby Man over there, <laughs> who are well capable of farming their own maize and much more to little Miss Kanini so that she grows just as large and capable. Understand? The final principle is effort. While need and capacity are determined in part by factors outside of one's control, effort is important because people also have and make choices. Now these two large gentlemen here are also my laziest and most unreliable students. <laughs> My resources would be wasted on them. If I had a thousand dollars for a research grant, I'd much rather give it all to Miss Kanini, who is the only person in this class who turns in her term papers on time. One measure of effort is fiscal responsibility, and the current weight attached to that for counties is 2%. Is that adequate? Should it be more or less? What criteria should we use to measure it? How best can we use the parameters of effort to encourage these two to try a bit harder with their classwork? <laughs> Alright, well then, who gets a larger piece of the pie? Darling! Darling, the kids! What on earth? What pies are you shouting about? Alright, well then, who gets a larger piece of the pie? I'd go with needs. Counties with the largest populations as well as those that are far behind in matters of infrastructure and development facilities no, 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 no. given priority. No, 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 no. 
I would go with effort. Putting resources in the places with the most effort is likely to yield greater returns revenue-wise. There is just no business in some places. Youth groups in Central and Nairobi. I think that capacity is the best measure. I think it encompasses both needs and effort and anything else is just the government making risky investments with no Pipe down, plans. pipe down. You see, people are trying to address all three of these issues. Areas with greater needs are getting more. Not just areas with higher population, but also marginalized areas like Turkana. There is indeed already greater investment in areas that have shown the greatest effort and possible return. People are looking at how to measure both effort and capacity. For example, people are looking at how to measure inequalities in capacity to raise revenues and factor in the data in an effective way in future allocations. We are already allocating and receiving revenue in a different and more reliable manner than before, thanks to the Constitution. One of the greatest hindrances holding back understanding on revenue allocation, though, is a selfish concern by parties over the allocation to their own regions and counties. As we tackle this matter, I would like to ask you to try as much as possible to consider overall national development as the ultimate goal and let that take precedence over short-term gains in particular regions and counties. To use our early examples, I'd like Ms. Kanini, Wycliffe, Osewe, and Job, the mountain, all to graduate with first-class honors and lead successful lives. Well, not everything is perfect yet. The new model has provisions for you, as an ordinary wanainchi, to actually make your views known to the Commission of Revenue Allocation and affect how resources are distributed. The real question is, what are you as a citizen doing about it? Your country needs you. Mm -hmm.